Welcome back to the discussion of federal identity government, sponsored by SailPoint on Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. My guest today is Kevin Cunningham, Chief Strategy Officer and Founder, SailPoint. I'm your moderator, John Gilroy. Now, churn is everywhere here in federal government. Every four years, it's the famous churn. But many of my listeners have churn every year. So it's hard to, to, to keep up with what's going on, especially when you have people coming and going all the time. How does this impact password management for new employees? Well, it actually is a, a major impact. So uh, federal government is not the only one that's subject to th- this churn. Uh, university systems sub- are subject to this churn every year. But even, you know, think about retail operations, right, where they have holiday seasonal hiring. Uh, so it's a big issue, both from an onboarding perspective. How do you get these people onboarded effectively and quickly with access to what they need to, to be productive? Um, but also, how do you manage them over time? Because a lot of times people will rejoin a workforce, forget their old ID, forget their old password. So where this comes into play is actually providing a facilitation of self-service. So I uh, part of our solution would be to provide self-service portals where individuals can go in and change their own passwords or reset their own passwords. So hmm. whether if I forgot my password or as a matter of security policy, I need to reset it every 90 days, I can actually alleviate the help desk of having to do that, intercede and do that by allowing people, giving them the flexibility to do it themselves. I was just thinking of you, you're traveling in Asia, it's uh, in the middle of the night and you're trying to change something. I mean, a human being can't be expected to manage identity for people traveling and remote workers as well. So this has got to be, the churn is, is within the organization as well, besides new employees. It's not just employees, right? Because think about partner communities. Uh, new partners are signing on all the time. Uh, partners are leaving uh, relationships, et cetera. So it's, it, the churn extends beyond employees, extends to contractors, explains, ex, expands to the business partners as well. You know, uh, a popular movement here in town is moving everything to the cloud. you got to go to the cloud. And what we see agencies doing, they, they maybe resist or want certain aspects of that going to the cloud. So they come up with something called the hybrid cloud. Right. So you get situations that it gets, it's very, very difficult. So does your solution impact anything to do with the hybrid cloud? Absolutely. So hybrid IT environments, which means basically you have assets and, and infrastructure that some of which is on-prem, but some of which is in the cloud. Uh, that's typically what we refer to as a hybrid IT environment. Uh, it's, it's pretty much the norm across all industries today. Uh, people are adopting new SaaS applications. They're moving workloads to uh, Amazon Web Services or Azure, uh, but they still maintain a set of legacy uh, assets that they still need to ma- manage and maintain. And doing the new cloud-based uh, applications and assets in context with the legacy is really important in providing that 360-degree view of what an individual has access to because sometimes it's the combination of access that represents a problem for organizations. And that, that, that combination of access is going to span cloud and on-prem environments. So managing the, the hybrid IT environment is, is very much part of our strategy. So the cloud may reduce cost, but increase complexity, increase the strains on identity management. So you get a maybe cost reduction and ability to scale easily. But what good is that if you can't manage the identity? Exactly. And I think that's, you know, that's been traditional in terms of adoption of new technologies. Uh, every time new technologies are adopted, whether it be a wireless networks or uh, smartphones, smart devices, uh, cloud applications, Every time we expand the universe of IT, we expand the domain of the identity governance problem. There is a term that I hear bantered about in town here. It's called shadow IT. In other words, someone's working for a company and they get uh, all sick and tired of John delaying. They get a credit card and they start some system going. And uh, the federal government can do something like that too. So so what does your solution provide as far as the shadow IT or this road IT go? Right. So it's it's really difficult to, to shut that down. In fact, I would argue you probably don't want to shut that down. It's actually a healthy thing. People adopt new technologies because it helps them be more productive. It gives them some competitive advantage. There's a reason they're doing this. And, they, and they're, in general, again, back to people's nature, we're pretty impatient, right? So we see the new shiny object. We want to adopt it as quickly as possible. And we're not necessarily concerned about the security implications of that or the management implications of that. We just want the shiny new object. So what happens is you see these technology ad- adoptions and then followed by the, the filling in behind that with things like identity governance. So rogue IT is really, in a nutshell, what people are doing to provide uh, self-service adoption of new technologies. It's up to the organization to follow that with the appropriate measure of governance and administration and management security to make sure that they're not putting the organization at undue risk. 
I have a friend named Dennis. He worked for the IRS for several years. Then he transitioned to transportation. Now, the question I had for him is, do you take your rights and privileges with you? Or what, new ones are assigned? How does that happen within agencies? So that that's a very good use case around what we call the mover. So typically around identity management, you've got joiners, new people coming on board who need access to new things. You've got movers. People are actually changing from one role to the other. And you've got leavers. People are either leaving voluntarily or involuntarily. And the mover use case is, is typically the most complex in terms of how do you manage the dual access that's sometimes required to be overlapped uh, so that I can finish out my old job even while I'm starting my new job. Um, but if you don't have visibility into those transitions and control those transitions, it's very easy for people to accumulate access like badges of honor. So if you huh. talked about, you know, some people who've been system administrators for many, many years, they have access to almost everything. Is, is that a smart thing from a risk management perspective? Probably not. So identity governance would come in and say, I understand what you need access for uh, and to to do your current job, not what you used to do, but what your current job is and map that appropriately. Great. Well, Kevin, we're going to have to uh, pause here for a short break. My guest today is Kevin Cunningham, Chief Strategy Officer and Founder, SailPoint. I'm your moderator, John Gilroy, on the discussion, Federal Identity Governance, sponsored by SailPoint on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. <laughs> 